Welcome to 24 Hours Channel. Here we provide continuous update on domestic and international news 24 hours a day, ensuring the fastest and most accurate information. We look forward to your support and feedback. Let's start with the following news highlight. Hello audience. Super Typhoon No. 2, after ravaging the Philippines two days ago, moved erratically to the northwest, entering the East China Sea. After that, the storm intensified, making landfall on the east coast of China, causing seven provinces and cities to be severely affected, including Zhejiang, Jiangsu, Anhui, Shandong, Fujian, and Shanghai. Due to district Anju City, Zhejiang province, was the hardest hit, with the strongest winds near the center of the storm, level 12, level 14, from 105 to 160 km per hour, gusting at level 14. In the northeast sea of Dutu district, Zhejiang province at 4.15 am this morning, the location of the No. 2 storm center was at about 17.5 degrees north latitude, 178 degrees east longitude, radius of strong winds of level 12, gusts of level 13 about 160 km from storm I. The No. 2 storm, accompanied by intense rain, knocked down an aged platform of the China Petroleum Company and then moved inland continue to have strong winds causing landslides, causing about 5,800 houses to be destroyed. The storm destroyed many trees, washed away many cars, and hundreds of aquaculture establishments of people in the area were raised in a split second. By noon yesterday, in Wenzhou city alone, local government officials said that the death toll from the No. 2 typhoon reached 17 people, and 25 others were injured, while 11 people are still missing. Meanwhile, in the three provinces of Guangdong, Fujian, and Jiangsu, which were also heavily affected by floods and landslides caused by the storm. At least 49 people have died in these three provinces, nearly 14,000 people. People still stayed at evacuation centers, and more than 23,000 people lacked electricity and running water due to the storm. When it made landfall in China on Saturday morning, the storm brought record rainfall and caused heavy damage to many parts of the province. More than 1,000 houses were damaged. 450 houses were completely destroyed and 3,000 houses were flooded. According to local government estimates, the damage caused by the No. 2 typhoon to the agriculture, forestry and fishery industries in these four provinces was the heaviest, with a total value of up to 27 billion yuan. However, the total damage is expected to continue to increase due to the lack of complete statistics, as some provinces are still flooded due to the impact of the storm. Meanwhile, China is forecast to continue to suffer more disasters caused by the storm. The storm came, it brought heavy rain and strong winds. Estimated rainfall in the provinces is from 300 meters to 500 meters down to the southeast provinces, China. Strong storms also severely affected the tourism industry, and in the port city of Qingdao, a famous tourist destination of Zhejiang province, all tourist attractions were closed and traffic was halted. Due to the impact of the storm, Many railway and bus lines were closed. Rescue forces, the army, police, local government employees and the people have been mobilized to support the victims, to respond and speed up relief work in places that have suffered severe damage. Most severe, in order to overcome the consequences of the storm. It is estimated that about 6.5 million people in Zhejiang, Jiangsu, Anhui, Shending, Fujian and Shanghai were severely affected by storms and floods. A bus was swept into a river on the outskirts of Shijiazhuang City, China, killing at least 300 people and leaving 101 others missing. Authorities said 37 of the 51 passengers on the bus were rescued. In Shanxi Province, floods have forced the evacuation of 120,000 people, destroyed nearly 17,000 houses, forced the suspension of hundreds of mines and damaged 190,000 hectares of farmland. A total of about 17.5 million people in Shanxi have been affected by flooding caused by rainfall almost four times the monthly average. China's international television network reported that villages were flooded by floodwaters, trapping people and causing dam failures. Aerial footage shows the rail support also being washed away, leaving the tracks suspended in the air. Some parts of the wall around the UNESCO-listed Binjiao Citadel were also eroded. Details of casualties or missing have yet to be released. The Global Times reported last week that four policemen were killed in a landslide on Tuesday. Of the more than 400 suspended mining operations, there are more than 60 coal mines. China is again experiencing severe power shortages due to coal shortages and record high prices, prompting authorities to demand increased coal production in other parts of the country. State media reported, 
59 National Weather Service reported record high daily rainfall. They said the water level of the Fen High River reached its highest level in four years. Torrential downpours fell for several days last week across Shanxi Province. In the 12 hours from night to morning, the province recorded an average water level of 31.3 mm, which increased to 119.5 mm across the province, of which 18 cities recorded a water level above 200 mm and a maximum of 285.2 mm. Tainuyan, the capital of Shanxi province, recorded 185 mm of rain, seven times higher than the average for the same period in 2022. The state news agency Xinhua reported on Sunday that there will be more rain and colder weather. Hao Nam, head of the Disaster Information Service Center, said the extent of the flooding was worse than the catastrophic floods that had hemmed on earlier this year, but the effects were not as bad. The report said Hao's primary concern for Shanxi was the accompanying cold weather. Dear audience, since February this year, many provinces in southern China have experienced heavy rains. According to figures released by the Chinese Communist Party, 24 provinces and cities in South China and Central China with 8.52 million people have been affected. Heavy rains caused floods in many places. In the early afternoon of last Wednesday, the upstream of the Three Gorges Dam and the power station in Denbo County, Gansi, Sichuan province was washed away and a landslide occurred. The incident has left the Three Gorges Dam, which was suspected of breaking last year, once again facing serious challenges. At the same time, Huang Xiaokun, a PhD student from the Chinese Academy of Civil Engineering, also warned in a group of friends on WeChat that next, the whole city of Yuchang will evaporate. According to mainland media, since February this year, heavy rain has often occurred in the south, and the north is experiencing steaming due to high temperatures. On e-commerce platforms like Taobao Mall, sales of lingerie and sunscreens skyrocketed. Starting from last Wednesday, parts of southwestern China, South China, and Central China began to experience heavy rain continuously for 24 hours. The Jiangxi Autonomous Region of Tibet has a maximum cumulative rainfall of up to 50 mm, with some areas having hail drops with a maximum diameter of 10 mm. Mai Long Ka Village in Denba District, Kimtu Autonomous Prefecture experienced a landslide. In Sichuan, the amount of rainwater sometimes reaches 10,000 cubic meters. The flood that began last Thursday caused the Mai Long power plant with a generating capacity of 2,000 kW to be swept away. Heavy rains in some areas of Sichuan are expected to last until the end of this month. China may have its biggest flood since 1,949 recently. China's Ministry of Water Resources warned that since the beginning of this year, cumulative rainfall in China has been 6% higher than in normal years. The Qianting River of Zhejiang, the Poyang and Xiangjiang lakes in the Yangtze River Basin, and 148 other tributaries have water levels exceeding the warning level. Some rivers have recorded historical floods. The situation flood control is very serious. Mr. Ye Jianshan, Vice Minister of Irrigation of the Chinese Communist Party, said that this year it is necessary to focus on three major risks, rampant flooding, reservoir accidents and flash floods from the mountains. Currently, China's flood defenses can protect against the biggest flood since 1949, but successive floods may exceed current defenses. This could be a black swan event. The declaration is understood to be the biggest flood since the Chinese Communist Party formed the government that could happen this year. The outside world is also concerned about whether the Three Gorges Dam, which has been reported to be deformed many times but has been rejected by the Chinese Communist Party, can withstand the impact of this flood. Wang Xiaoku, a PhD student from the Chinese Academy of Civil Engineering, also issued a warning. After that, Yuchang City will evaporate. The outside world often doubts about the Three Gorges Dam in early July last year. Some netizens posted on social media a satellite map of the Three Gorges Dam. The image shows that the Three Gorges Dam is severely deformed, causing the public to worry about the dam failure. In response to this issue, the Chinese Communist Party's media outlets repeatedly quelled the rumor, claiming that the Three Gorges Dam has no defamation problem, and at the same time said it was a rumor caused by anti-China forces. Fabricated. The Beijing News then quoted experts, admitting that the dam was indeed deformed, but that this was in an elastic state. In a statement, the Three Gorges Company said the dam moved horizontally, but less than 3 centimeters. In an interview with foreign media, irrigation expert Fu Ong Dilek said that the Three Gorges Dam is not elastic defamation because it is not one, and he said that there is no need to look at the photos. Also know that the Three Gorges Dam is deformed. Mr. 
Huang pointed out that the Three Gorges Dam consists of dozens of independently formed concrete dams, each set on a rock foundation, which is separate from the bedrock. Due to the pressure and temperature of the water, the dam will develop different deformations and displacements. That means the dam is moving, and this design makes the Three Gorges Dam very fragile. At the time, he warned that the photos showed the dam moving unevenly, which in turn would have serious consequences for the dam in the future. Once the Three Gorges collapse, hundreds of thousands of people of Yichang City will disappear. The daughter of irrigation engineering expert Huang Wangli, who wrote a letter protesting against the launch of the Three Gorges Dam, Ms. Huang Xiaolu, the head of the Huang Wangli Research Foundation, also spoke about the document protesting against the construction of the Three Gorges Dam. Building the Three Gorges Dam and six letters her father sent to the Chinese leadership. In recent days, netizens have continuously shared videos of floods raging in mainland China. It can be seen the tragic situation the Chinese people are facing, predicting a more blurred future ahead. Some people have lost loved ones, some lost their homes, lost their livelihood sources. Many houses have been submerged in water for more than two months. Thank you for your attention and support. Please leave your comment in the video's comment section so that we can promptly respond to any question or feedback you may have. If you find our content value, please like and click the bell icon below to stay updated with the last video from our editorial team. See you in the upcoming news bulletin of channel.